You know, it's interesting. I grew up in a town, uh, Bayonne, New Jersey, 75,000 people, and my dad was a police officer for 27 years, and he worked his whole life for his pension. Think of a pension, 401k. Um, you know, money is meant to be distributed later on in life and a guaranteed benefit on a monthly basis, right? What my parents didn't know then, um, and they found out as time went on, although the pension was great, my dad, may he rest in peace when he passed away, my mom was still able to get it, but each dollar is taxed at ordinary income. So today what we're gonna talk about what to do with your 401k after you retire. Okay, so I get asked this question all the time. What, ha what do I do with my 401k after I retire? So let's play with the psychology first. You know, folks out there, typically their whole working life are saving on a monthly basis into their 401k plan. And the 401k plans typically have a menu with different choices on what you can invest in. So it's, on some respects, it is limited, uh, but at the end of the day, it is still you know, meant for you to save money so later on in life you could access it in retirement. A big thing happened in the 70s, though, when ERISA kind of created the 401k. It made a shift from pension plans to 401ks, which basically meant the owners of major corporations were no longer responsible or took on the risk for the employees that were saving money. And the reason why that happened was because as time went on, you know, in the 1900s to the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, the average person lived a lot longer, which meant if they had a pension, that sometimes if, they, if the normal life expectancy was 60 or 70, and it turned out to be 80 or 90, that somebody lived, that meant that the corporation had to pay. So now was the birth of the 401k, right? I know I took you on a little bit of a roller coaster there, but just stay with me, it's important. So as somebody is saving during their wealth accumulation years while you're working, and then you get to retirement, now all of a sudden you have choices. Some of the choices are, do I keep it with the corporation that I worked 30 years with in their 401k, or do I roll it over to a traditional IRA? Which means, you know, let's say hypothetically speaking, there's a million dollars in a 401k, you would roll it over with no tax consequence to the IRA. The taxes only happen when you start taking distributions. But now you're retired, you worked your whole life, and let's say you made 100 grand a year, and now all of a sudden you're gonna take money out of the 401k, the rule of thumb according to the College of Financial Planning is to have 70% of your income in retirement that you had during your working years. Well, I don't agree with that rule, but I'll play with that anyway. So now all of a sudden you're taking money out of your 401k, but each dollar is taxed at ordinary income. And whatever the prevailing tax law is at that time when you retire, is what your money's going to be exposed to besides fees and inflation and lost opportunity cost. You also have to factor in, okay, what kind of other assets do I have at retirement when I, take, when I, when I <clears throat> begin to take distributions on my 401k? You may be an entrepreneur that owns real estate or maybe not, or you may have social security to whatever degree that looks like is gonna factor in on how you take distributions out of your 401k. There is other folks out there that believe that, hey, maybe I should do a tax smart second opinion. Now, I'm not an accountant, I'm not in a fiduciary, so I'm not suggesting that, but what a tax smart second opinion is, there are folks based on what they believe taxes are gonna be in the future that begin to slowly move some of their money from the 401k into a Roth IRA. In other words, they wanna pay taxes now so they don't have to pay it later. These are the different choices that are out there. These are the different options, so remember, Nothing is cookie cutter. Nothing is like, let me just do this one thing. You have to factor in all of these different things. You have to factor in what age you are when you start taking the distributions. You have to factor in your social security. You have to factor in the other assets. Take a look at historical tax, tax tables. Get an idea what that's gonna look like. Are you gonna live in a state that has state taxes or no income state taxes? Once you begin to understand all these different decisions, and by the way, we always say it, Always make sure that you're on the same page with all your planners, your accountant, your trust officer, your insurance agent. Then you could decide really what the best path is to make. Anyway, just some quick thoughts on what to do with a 401k when I retire. You know, and for all you folks out there that along the way during your wealth accumulation phase happen to purchase cash value, high dividend paying whole life insurance, at retirement there's a couple of more choices that you're gonna have because remember, you now have a death benefit that is guaranteed if it's done the right way, 
which allows you to view your 401k differently and how you spend that down. You don't have to now worry about outliving your money per se, right? So if that's in there for you, that also creates the opportunity to, to look at, at any given point in time during your distribution phase, the tax law at that time a little bit differently because you get that little Swiss Army knife action going on from the insurance. Anyway, every single day we're dropping this content, and if you really want more, or if you really wanna to talk to an individual here at Epic, go ahead and click that link below. One of the members will get in touch with you and share with you our success process.